As always, Tozer's fun. I think I looked at the title and kind of went, okay. <laughs> have you ever... I should say, I have. How's that? <laughs> Whenever I ask people questions, you know, it's like, they don't realize that I'm only asking something I have been through, experienced, and participated in myself. So, when I ask this, it's not as though it were something foreign, but it's something I've been through. But have you ever been burned by a Christian? Have you ever been, like, really just ticked off, or somebody just took advantage of you, and though they said they were a Christian, and when they were Christian-like, they were very Christian, but then they did something somehow, in some way, to just burn you big time, and that maybe you were actually right and you shouldn't have been burned. And then didn't it just get your goat <laughs> and you just chewed on it? That's why they call it getting your goat, by the way. Because you'll chew on it for the rest of your life. But being burned by someone that you trusted, isn't that just as bad, too? Like, have you ever been burned by life, by love? by circumstance, by situations or people, your family maybe, maybe even your wife or your husband. Have they burned you in some way? Have you been hurt by them in a very bitter way? Are you carrying that still with you today? Are you experiencing it? For me, I've been through all of it. <laughs> I've been burned by pastors, by my wife, not my present one. <laughs> the wife that burned me, she's She's gone. <laughs> she went bye-bye. Anyways, the point is, I've been burned by pastors, by preachers, by teachers, by people, by ungodly, by godly, by business associates, by non-business associates, by those that love me, by my own family, by you name it. I've, I've seen it. And in all of them, in all the circumstances, in every single one of them, the answer was always the same, what God wanted me to do. And I knew that it wasn't important who did what to me, but what I did about what was done and went to God with. So this may help you today in realizing it, but I want to, when I read this, you know, from Tozer, because he's always pretty hard-hitting, I'm not sure what he's going to say and what the Lord may use to touch you in this way today, you know, with what he may imply, imply or apply to you. But for me, I wanted to share that the way I got over it was that it's not just about forgiveness or just about forgetting because you know, come on, let's be real. You know you still have a little, you know, that you would go, you know, and it bugs you. And that it's a sore spot. Well, one lesson I've learned in all of those times that I've been gotten over them is give it time. <laughs> For Pete's sake, give it a rest. Get away from it. Stay away from it. Don't think about it. Just walk away. Just let it go. You know, the let go part is that, yes, you're going to be mad tomorrow if it happened today. And you're going to be mad probably the next day. And it's probably going to bug you for a while. But give it time and let God change that wound that's bleeding, so to speak, profusely. Let him, first of all, you know, cauterize the wound. Let him kind of like stop the bleeding. So then he can start the healing because you can't heal something that's still bleeding because it's taking away the oxygen and the life-giving force from it so you got to stop bleeding by reliving it over and over again or being in it at the time you have to go beyond it so give it time and god will heal you of any bitterness you might have if somebody somewhere at some point in time unrighteously burns you because God wants to heal you from what happened to you. You'll deal with the circumstances and the people in his own time. But in your time, deal with what you need to do with him today, rather than go your way and try to justify or correct or resolve or somehow fix what burned you in the first place. The example of Jesus, hold no grudges, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus Christ left us an example for our daily conduct. 
and from it there can be no appeal. We can't compromise, we can't adjust it, we can't make up excuses. He felt no bitter resentment and he held no grudge against anyone. Even those who crucified him were forgiven while they were in the act of doing it. Not a word did he utter against them, nor against the ones who stirred them up to destroy him. And the people were crowd, and crowds were there, and they were shouting and spitting. How evil they all were, he knew better than any other man. But, and a big but, he maintained a charitable attitude toward them, a loving attitude. He demonstrated what he taught, and what he taught, he did. They were only doing their duty, and even those who ordered them to their grisly task were unaware of the meaning of their act. To Pilate, Jesus said, You could have no power at all against me, except it was given you from above. So he referred everything back, always, to the will of God, and rose above the swampland of personalities. It's too easy to get mired in your own interpretation of what's happening than to accept the obvious dissertation of what God's will is for you. The person with the resentful heart takes just the opposite course than Jesus did. He grows every day harder and harder of heart and more acrimonious and bitter and mad and poisoned as he defends his reputation his rights, his freedoms, his, rep his ministry against his imagined foes. The worst feature about this whole thing is that it does no good to call attention to it. And not one. The bitter heart is not likely to recognize its own condition. The resentful man in the meantime will grow smaller and smaller, trying to get bigger and bigger and he will know more and more obscure self, and he will become more and more obscure, even as he's trying to make known what it was, how it was, and what went on. As he pushes on toward his selfish goal, his very prayers will be sorely accusations against the Almighty, whether he realizes he's doing so or not. And his whole relationship toward other Christians will be one of suspicion and distrust. For me, the reality of being healed, of my being burned, was that in most of the circumstances where I was burned, I was innocent of any of the accusations. But while it took me time to get over them, likewise I was able to deal with the person and the circumstance without becoming bitter. It made me better to be able to be forgiving. And in some of the cases, especially in leadership positions like the pastors or with people that I could still come into contact with that are no longer, some people are dead or gone or wherever, but, but the people that I could still come into contact with, I could still deal with them. And some of them, to this day, I still do even though they burned me in a big way. And the blessing of that is that it frees you up and gives you the capability to share the forgiveness and the mercy towards others in spite of what others may do to you. And once you've been burned and you can do that, it gets easier each time. And then you don't react at all to somebody doing something stupid that's just... Yeah, we've been there, done that, who cares? <laughs> so for your own sake, if not just for the sake of others too, don't hold bitterness, but forgive. Don't hold slights against you, but let it go. Give yourself time to be healed, but let Jesus do it in you, and you'll find, hey, being burned isn't such a bad thing. It almost has become a good thing. At least it has become so in my life. Maybe it will be in yours.